Sisters, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Why go? Hello. <laughs> wow. Hello, welcome to, yes, we're going. Um, special edition of the Wow Report. I'm Fenton, co-founder of World of Wonder, here with Tom Campbell. Tom Hello. Campbell. Just Hello, two everyone. Words. Tom, Tom Campbell. Tom and Campbell. International famous yes. name. And Jane St. James. Hello. Oh, my God. Literary sensation. Wow. Editor of the Wow Report. Now, here you mentioned this was a very special this edition. This is very special, because normally we count down the top ten things that make us go, wow. wow. And we're going to do that today, but the difference is it's a theme it's a theme. It's I, I, love love a theme. I love a theme. I love a theme. Why did and, no one tell me? Yeah, <laughs> and the category is things that are obsolete. These are things that we used to be around, but now are no longer necessary in our modern technological age. This is very age. 2019, you guys. Yes, yes. I love it. And we can't include ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a couple more months. <laughs> so we start top number nine. <laughs> top 10 things. So, Tom, I think I'll correct that. We'll start at number 10. Why don't? I love it. Number 10. Um, You know what's obsolete? What is obsolete, Tom? Phone sex ads in the back of free weeklies. Well, I think phone sex ads altogether are just gone, <laughs> aren't they? But do you do remember? You, well, go ahead. Yes, I do. But And they were always so smutty and varied and... Very particular. Yes. Right. Well, there was the Not LA Weekly here yeah. in New York. Where would you like? Like, what was the, the mainstream? Voice. The they Village would, Voice. Yeah. They would also. They also had like um special little smutty little newspapers that you could get for free, yeah. like on the street. Entire newspapers just yes. dedicated With to nothing but nothing yes. but, but, but but ads for for sex. And does like Frontier Magazine exist anymore? No. No. That's no. like a gay rag in LA. Mm -hmm. And um, it's different because some of it was paid and some of it was personal people just looking and there was a nice intersection of those two things <laughs> there, 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 there were hustlers who were selling their wares yes specifically but then there were also like phone sex lines that you sure. could you could call and there'd be like one nine hundred numbers and there'd be like a party line maybe with it was, 40 people on maybe it, it was nine seven six musk m-u-s-c <laughs> for muscle the le was for free uh, okay oh, when we used to put things i but, never i never called any of them did you I did. You did. And I were, did. Were, was this something you would call at three in the morning and be like, hello, my name is Well, Bob. I used to fall asleep at three in the morning. No, but you did have a persona. Right. Uh -huh. It was very it was very radio theater. It's very much like what we do here on the Wow Report. <laughs> you say, you say, hello, I'm Bob, and I'm looking for other masculine Hi, tops. Hi, Bob. Well, there was some where you left a recording, oh, okay. and then people would hook up with you. And there was others that you just, you're live in the chat room. And it'd be like, hey, how's it going? I mean, you did have your... Pick up voice, but, but, but did you also like? Did people say, "Tom, what are you doing here?" Like, <laughs> oh did people God, recognize Tom. your voice? And they, they, they would just beep, push nine, and you move on. But I, um, <laughs> I always felt like I never ran into people I knew online, but probably I did. But um, and it ended up being a lot of the same people. What would happen is there'd be like a nine seven six line, or the technology popped in in the eighties, and all of a sudden everyone would use it because we were, especially in the gay community, gay people would be like, "Oh, we all use it." And everyone this would be was like, "The grinder of its yes. time." They'd be like, "Oh, I met my boyfriend on nine seven six muscle, and I moved on." And I would be there like five years later, nine seven six muscle, nine seven six muscle. And wait, would you stay on these party lines for hours, and like people would come and go, and it would be sort of like a chat room because they charge you by the minute, right? Or oh, it did. And it, did you end up having like um, phone bills that were like nine thousand? Uh, if my Santa Monica roommate won't, uh, won't hopefully doesn't hear this. No. <laughs> yes, I did a little bit. But I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was. You know, it was also. I have to say, in my defense, it was during the height of the AIDS sure. crisis, and it was a way to maybe pleasure yourself and to get off without having to actually exchange fluids. Well, it was the same Wasn't sort of idea sexy? as um, <laughs> there would be the the J O clubs. Yeah, there there yes. was strictly lips above the hips clubs, and like you would um, go there, and that was at the heights of the AIDS. And wait, 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 I know it's obsolete now, but like, so what? You just jack up in front of someone? Yeah, yeah. There yeah. would be no, they wouldn't touch you. You wouldn't touch. No, them. no, there was no touching. Nobody was allowed to touch anybody. But you would just stand on opposite sides of the room in like scuba equipment, scuba, scuba gear, so that like no AIDS fluids would be chased. That's so scary. Uh, no, 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 it's no. true. It's true. And then what? Just everyone was just. Jizzing on the floor. Yeah, no, I, I lived above one. It was called Jay's, <laughs> and it was on um in the Triangle Building. If you remember, on Fourteenth yeah. Street. I remember the Triangle Building, Fourteenth yes. Street. Yeah. And uh, you would help. sometimes check your clothes in a yes. plastic bag, and a garbage bag. Because I lived above it, I got in for free every single night. You That's like, where I recognize yes. you from. And on the other side was Hellfire, which was the straight S and M club. 
That's I hot. just see you climbing down the fire escape. <laughs> you know? But wow. here's my one thing. My, my one, in Santa Monica, on West Hollywood, in, in on Santa Monica Boulevard, there's the 24-Hour Fitness, and there used to be the Athletic Club, which was the Sexy Club. Yeah. And then next to that was the Kukuru. And I used to call the Kukuru. I love Kukuru. The third gym, because everybody would work out and then go there. I would, of course, skip the gym like, and go straight to Kukuru. Kukuru is one of those obsolete things. That's something that's obsolete it's now. True. I wait, 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 wait. It. It's a chicken place. Yes. 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 Oh, it was so good. But you used to go, because they'd have Frontier magazines, which are the sexy magazines, and you'd go and you'd look in the back, and everyone would be like chin down, like Masur ads, <laughs> chin down. But I always, and people used to have pagers back then. And be, so I was like, another thing that's obsolete. Yes, you, you're, 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 you're checklisting <laughs> them all. But you could, my joke was, you could, you could like look in the back of the Frontiers, dial the number, and, 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 everybody, and, and everybody's like pager would go off because they were all <laughs> coming from the gym in the afternoon. <laughs> but um, bump. So, um, no longer, you know, relevant, obsolete, sadly, phone sex ads and phone sex lines that used to be in the back of free weeklies. Yeah. What is iBone? <laughs> is that a slang expression? Yeah, it's like uh, 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 cyber sex. Oh, I, I see. So we can now use FaceTime or Skype to iBone. Have you iBone lately? No. And literally any kind of porn you can think of, we found with a quick Google search. Number nine, James. Number nine. Well, mine isn't quite as salacious as yours, or as lurid uh, as yours. <laughs> Sex is a as, real as topic. Tawdry <laughs> as yours. Um, but I really miss um, uh, going to bookstores and looking for reference books. I used to love reference books. I used to have a, a nice collection of dictionaries and reverse dictionaries and thesauruses and, and uh, books of odd facts and Bartlett's books of quotations. But uh, you still have them. Uh, uh, fads, follies, and manias. No, not really, because those are all things you find online now you it's don't true. need a book of quotations because if you want a quotation you just go online and look james i have a set of encyclopedias i like to sell you yeah <laughs> but that's just it my mom i used to love our encyclopedias when, when i was little i used to go and read them like start with a and go my work my way through z i used to and you don't need that anymore i also, would always go straight to s for sex <laughs> <laughs> um but and then there's, there's a whole other category of reference books that i used to love to buy but now these are just things that that uh, are basically just web pages or blogs. Wikipedia. Now. Yeah. Um, 14 things that to be, ha or 1400 things that make you happy. And that would so just. So it was be listicles. Yeah, listicles. Um, Weird California, Haunted Los Angeles, um, Encyclopedia of the Exquisite is a book that I have. Um, Viva la Riposte about choice comebacks and witty retorts. I don't retorts. want to interrupt you, but here's the thing. I mean, I know the internet has made all these things irrelevant, but you type in what you're looking for and you get endless amounts of. Ad There's a lot of. You have to go through a lot of cyber junk to get to yeah. the information you're seeking. Whereas if you got the book, you can just pull it off the shelf, and there you are. You're right well, immersed in haunted. You know the yeah. thing is, I um now I, I have a I I buy all my books on Kindle now. I read everything on my my pad except for coffee table books, which are the only type of books that really you need to buy in in person. Because it's more like decor than a coffee yeah. table book. Yeah, but you know I do. I have like um. Like books like uh, Castles of Ireland, things like that. That like that really, if you just bus are, stops of the so exact, Soviet Union. But if you really are looking for those, I mean, don't you just go for a web web page? And I know I've tried to p um, uh, pitch books to my agent before, yeah. and he always just says, "Well, why isn't that just a website? Why isn't that just a blog? Wouldn't you just do a blog if yeah, you're doing?" Yeah, but your agents disappeared. We don't know what they're like. Yeah. I so, did, yeah, is that my, true? yeah, my agent did. Um, uh, I think I've told this story oh, before. Oh, no, you, didn't, you haven't found him last time we spoke. Well, the last time, yeah, because the, um, and a bunch of other agents were trying to find him. The Harry Potter's agent went on a big, massive hunt and hired a detective looking oh. for him, and they managed to find him. He's a homeless person <gasps> in Chelsea now, and he's sort of lost his mind, and he's crazy and wandering around babbling to himself. James. I Do you know. think signing you was the last uh, job? No, so, well, RuPaul was the last person he signed. <gasps> the ironic thing, I'm talking about encyclopedia which I guess is a different topic, but it's kind of the same. Same, yeah. Which is my mom bought, you know, she had, she got married in 56 to my dad. She had David in 57, nine months more and after. And then I think in 1958, she bought a set of encyclopedias because she just was sitting at home and encyclopedia salesman showed they, up. Yeah, they, they, they door to door encyclopedias. Yes. And she had, we had a whole shelf and they weren't even alphabetized. It was like they would come one at a time and then you have like I an remember. index. Uh -huh. Right. And because it was a basic selling scam. It was like, keep yes. on buying, keep on buying. And of course, by the time her kids are in school in 75, 76, 77, 78, it's a little bit old information. It was very obsolete. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, my mother still had. Um, a, a complete set that we got in the late 60s and she still went to them even though it was completely obsolete yes. unless you're doing like ancient Greece or something and then it was good yeah yeah but if you did any kind of yeah, my anyway. brother 
before he became an architect, was an encyclopedia door-to-door salesman. Really? And what he had was, he had this big fold-out poster that once once he got his foot in the door and you, you went, he would fold it out and it would basically fill the floor of the living room, this gorgeous color poster. And when he stopped selling encyclopedias, he gave me that poster and I hung it up and it was always like, it was like having a set of encyclopedias <laughs> without having the burden of the encyclopedias. You just felt... And this was in your room. In my instead room, of having Farrah Fawcett posters, you had like an encyclopedia. 26 volumes. <laughs> Dare I ask, where is that now? I don't know. Don't know. It's Would that be lost, amazing if you had it? If it, yeah. it, was, it wasn't just on paper. It was on some sort of vinyl type sure. thing that could withstand repeated folding Like and laminated folding something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A la- laminated. Hey, door to door salesman. Also obsolete. Yeah. We're just packing them in here. <laughs> right and left. <laughs> well, uh, at number eight. Number eight. Here is Exhibit A. Oh! oh fun is this, that? For those of you listening at home, this is a Rolodex. Mm. And I used to, when I remember buying my first Rolodex pretty shortly after coming to New York, and I used to carry it with me. That's the extraordinary thing, because I didn't really have an office. I would carry it around town, and I have never taken anyone's name Naomi out. Naomi Campbell's so in here. I'm afraid, I'm afraid quite a few people probably passed oh, on as well. I, well this is wait, the, wait, Naomi Campbell's on. This is, I think this is the East Coast. Oh, look, Walter I have a, no, I have a oh, West Coast on. and an East Coast. Walter S. Yeah, this is, I think this is all East Coasty. Um, but the Rolodex was a great thing, and I think you know. Well, I it was a very chic thing to have. If you you would go through it, and you would go through other people's, like I'm doing right now, right. and you would see Nelson who the Sullivan. famous Nelson Sullivan. Rudolph oh. had a huge, big one, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Like, and um, there was. Uh, and you have. I remember on um, publicists would have an A list, a B list, and a C list Rolodex. Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. And the, the the thing is, I you know I know now you can get contacts online and you can look it up and you can look and it's contact. easy. Tennessee. But it's actually there is something so easy about flicking through this Rolodex and pulling out the card. Yes. And then just replacing it. Yes. Call you. Yes. Get her on the phone and and you still have it. That's so it's crazy still of you. Have it. And let's oh, not yes. forget, sort of related to this, the file effects. The, the, the idea of the little like uh, little oh yes, the original like multi little ring notebook. Thing yes, that, you you that was an eighties thing. Yes. Remember, you were big into your BlackBerry, weren't you? That was a huge. Well, one. that came later. That was a, the amazing thing about the BlackBerry was it came as a freebie when Party Monster was at Sundance. I don't remember. And they get ga- <laughs> and they gave us. Uh, we each got everyone got a BlackBerry except you. James. I do remember. Wait a minute. I remember uh, you got to go to gifting suites that I wasn't invited no, to. No, we were. You we, did. We had, you were horrible about it. <laughs> Funny what we remember, isn't it, James? Yes, I it's remember you guys. You time and Randy would take go- a break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you saved this. I've had Rolodexes. I don't know that I saved them. Don't you have a few in your office? I, well, I have two. There's this is the East Coast one, and then there's another one that's the West Coast well, one. And then on my first one. original one was you like a Blackberry. Is it Sundance? Yes, that's what they gave it to us for free. It was it when it was when back in the days, James, when swag. I mean, no, I remember. Like I remember really, specifically you and Randy saying we're going to a gifting suite. We're sorry you can't come. <laughs> That's story of your damn that, life. That doesn't, that doesn't sound does, like now, now, here I have a question. Because S is broken all. up into S, yeah. S I, S T. Where would you put St. James? There's a lot of S's. You wouldn't put him in there because I wasn't good enough. <laughs> He'd be on the C I list. I would look on the C for Clark, James Clark. Oh, that. <laughs> Uh, I don't think he's here. I don't want to bust. We'll, no, we'll make right. that a mystery. Okay. Um, no longer. I want a BlackBerry. You know, the, the other thing they say. I, not mine. The other thing they <laughs> say absolutely. about our current mobile phones is the brain has a way of mm. just not remembering what it doesn't have to remember. Well, I live in fear of being arrested, oh. and you know that you get the one phone call. But how I wouldn't remember a phone you call. Know I wouldn't right. Right. But we used to remember a, we, not all the numbers. We used to remember yeah. a lot of numbers, and we remember none of them now because them. they're all on the phone. They're all like click, 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 and our brain just like lets it go. So if, if you're in jail, I was no, going to say, awful. good luck. It's yeah. awful. Actually, it's worse than that because I think the phone remembers stuff and you don't bother to remember. You then go back a step further. So it's not like you used to be able to, you used to be able to remember numbers and such, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Now you don't remember numbers because they're on the phone. But now it's even worse. You don't even remember the name of the person. Yeah. So that is like, I, I, I can spend a lot of time trying to like, who is this person? And like Googling in things like, Where's dresses or like try to put in clues that will throw up the name I'm looking for. Where's dresses? My God, that would be every single person. Know, every bad, man, woman, and child uh-huh. on your on your life. Bad example, sorry. Okay. So <laughs> huge properties, huge personalities. That's what you'll see on Million Dollar Listings Los Angeles every Thursday, nine PM on Bravo. Get caught oh, up on the love, love, love. 
What what have we got? What have we got? Uh, From the Rolodex card, it's it's under C. It's Club Kids, <laughs> and it has four of them listed. Oh, but not James and Jen. No, because no, you no, just no. your own card. Oh, oh, well, Tom well, Campbell is rifling through it. my old ancient I'm sorry, I'm This is bringing up some no, really bad feelings. This is really bringing up a lot of like hurt. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, yeah. oh, remember same bank. thing. Blake, do you have a question for us? I do. Quick, mm. hurry. <laughs> well, um, according to Pornhub, which was kind of like. What Tom was talking about was sex lines oh, earlier. Thanks. Yeah, uh huh. According to Pornhub in 2013, Pornhub. Hmm. what state spent the longest average time on their site? And which state spent the shortest average time? I think I know the answer to this. I know the answer to the longest time. All right. Hmm. I'll let everyone else think about it. We will. Hello. Quentin Crisp, telephone number. Yes, it won't help you much now. No. Uh, we'll have the answer for that question right after the break. You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. And we are back. I'm Fenton. I'm here with Tom and James and Blake. And we're having a grand old time <laughs> counting down top 10 things that are now obsolete. It's a sort of special dinosaur edition, right? Yeah. Things that once made us go. Wow. <laughs> but now make us go. Aww. Okay, Blake, before the break, we had a trivia <laughs> question. I said, according to <laughs> Pornhub in 2013, what state spent the longest average time on their site and what state spent the shortest average time? Okay, longest average time. Let's do that one first. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, I know it's Republican. Okay. And oh. I think it's Texas. What oh. do you think? I was going to say it's probably some lonely, desolate place like Alaska or something like that where everyone is. That's such a good point. I'm going to say Utah. Number one is Mississippi. Oh. So it is a red site and desolate. And they watch the most porn. And uh -huh. who watches the least amount of porn? Does it count? Is it the 50 states plus Puerto Rico or just the 50 states? Uh, I think it's just the 50 states. Okay. Because I imagine Puerto Rico, they don't need to watch porn. They just live delightfully. I'm going to say Hawaii. They watch very little porn. I'm going to say Vermont. Well, I'm going to say Florida. Well, uh, it, Fenton got it. Rhode Island, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Oh my God, that's not the same as Vermont. But the, you've grown up and left, so Hawaii. 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 Oh, oh. Hawaii. New Hampshire. Now that I'm gone, is it because it, did they do it like per per square mile or something? Is, per is state, it, per head. No, I know, but but like, w would it be because there aren't as many people there, so they aren't watching as much porn? No, I, I think they're dividing be, by people. It must be no. weight adjusted. Or Hawaii is adjusted. actually the second longest, followed really? by Arkansas. Well, I guess the weather is not. I just Arkansas. Oh, mm -hmm. congratulations, Blake. All right, so we are counting down top ten things that are now obsolete. Number seven, Tom. Number seven. I hate to say this, and I know there's a few hanger-ons. I'm going to give James some time. I'm going to cede my time to my colleague from James and James Land. Um, I was home not too long ago on a rainy day. I didn't go to work, and I thought, oh, this is just the perfect time to catch up on all my children, just to pop by Pine uh, Valley. Yeah, yeah. And it dawned on me. There I can't. There's no Pine Valley anymore. There's no Pine Valley. There's no land view. There's no land view. Uh -huh, there's, uh, there's... Ryan's hope is hopeless. Yeah. There's... Loving is 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 hateful. Uh, <laughs> General I, Hospital. General you, Hospital still, there. still exists. I still watch General Hospital. And and there's a couple that hold on, but like just the the idea of the soap opera. So what um, did you watch? You know, what you I, nothing. And and I, what I find, what's weird in LA, I'm kind of used to it. When I go, I'm also back east at Christmas, so there's inevitably a day I'm at my sister's in Cambridge and the daytime TV and I turn it on. And I swear to God, there especially, maybe Boston, but it's like all the ads on daytime are like colostomy bags, and yes. it's 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 like so clearly not where young people are watching TV. Well, I also find too that the. the I you know in the the morning TV used to be really fun. You used to watch like Looney Tunes. You used to watch like uh, Gilligan's Island, all that stuff. And now that it's really it's seventeen hours of Good Morning America, yes. starting at four in the morning and, and going until four in the afternoon. Yes. it just never ends. Yes, and um, you know the Today Show is six hours and. Regis and Kathy Lee. I mean, it's what is it? It's, it's Kelly and Ryan. Kelly and Ryan just goes on and on and on. It's just, and you know, you used to do Price is Light, right? Because you would love Bob Barker. Sure. You know, Oprah, would, there'd be Phil Donahue, Oprah's there would be Sally Jesse, yes. there would be all of those things. It's not there anymore. And the soap opera is just, it's that the landscape has just changed a lot of daytime television. And I, you know, we've talked about soaps a couple of times, but like, 
in the summer soaps were so good. Oh, summer TV, yeah. Because they would introduce young storylines that aren't stupid, and it would just be these like hot girls by the pool or a cute boy. Um, so I, I they're and Remember I know when why Jenny they're... blew up on the water ski. Oh my God, I will never. Greg and forget. Jenny. Greg and Jenny. When they were finally in love. Yes, and, and, Je- then... and Jenny ran off to New York, yes. and, and Sylvia Miles was her pimp. Remember, it was the <laughs> she, she worked out made it for porn in Center City. Yeah, at the at, at, at Foxy at the Foxy Club. But how, how did she blow up on the water ski? I'm sorry, you just she, me she was um she, she, she was leaving the show. Yes. The, the actress Kim, was leaving Kim the show. Delaney, the actress yeah, who, went who went on, on to, to NYPD Blue. Mm-hmm. But she was in a story with. Greg Greg uh, was her boyfriend. They were teenagers, and and one day they were skiing, water skiing one day, and her jet ski blew up, and yeah. that's how the actress left the show. Yes. And I will never forget, as long as I live, just sobbing with my sisters that hard. Jenny was dead. Wait, was, was she hard. water skiing or jet skiing? She was on a jet ski. She was jet ski. skiing, okay. and it was a brand new thing. It was very edgy. Yeah. I don't remember jet skis blowing up. Is that a... Me either. No. Well, no, I think I think there was a bad guy who blew probably, it up. Yeah, I think oh, we figured rigged that out. it. Yeah. 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 And that's okay. how, and, but literally, the love story of Greg and Jenny. It was like the love story of Luke and Laura. When Luke and Laura ran away to uh, yeah. w- uh, something corners. Um, yeah. Wait, was, as Mabel and something. Yeah. Was that, there was a and, Netflix, uh, Netflix picked up one of the soaps, right? And they just didn't renew it. They said, oh, not enough people watched No, they tried it. to put it on. They tried to put um, One Life to Live and All My Children online, and that didn't work. Not at the time. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. the new Disney.com, the new Disney streaming. Um so rest in peace, uh, soap operas. Even though my aunt Hazel, ninety two, and James St. James still <laughs> I mean, watch still do. General I Hospital still every day. Still watch General Hospital. Still watch Days of Our Lives every single night. All right, all right. Number six, James. Number six. You know, I really miss phone booths. I miss the, <laughs> Just the old... way you say that sounds so <laughs> I miss the old, old fashioned phone booth. Talk where... us through it. Walk us through it. What do they Wait, look like? In yeah. the olden days, when you would actually get inside a phone booth that had a door, mm-hmm. and you would you would put the door closed, and you could have conversations that were with people, and nobody could listen to you. Like now, like today, you know, you listen, you hear everybody's every yes, word we do, on James. every phone call. It's, it's <laughs> maddening. I also, you know, um, remember in the olden days when you. You would put you would call a number and then you would wait for the um, uh, operator to tell you how many how much it costs and they would say thirty seven cents please and you would have to go through your, your pocket change purse. your change first you have to get a quarter <laughs> and a nickel and two dimes do you remember that song Sylvia's mother Sylvia's mother says Sylvia's leaving and the operator says twenty nine cents I do remember that no this is the song minutes. we'll be playing oh, it on the way out to commercial you know now Mr. <laughs> you're making this up you're no it was a huge yourself. hit in the seventies it was the most annoying dreary slit your wrist <laughs> song you can imagine but it was a huge hit and it was all about the operator and you had yes. to because in England you didn't have to put the money the operator didn't come on and say please deposit you put the money in for us, and then you made the call. But if you didn't know how much it cost, you, you would just you calling, put the money in Toluca Lake or something like that. It <laughs> would be twenty-seven dollars. But anyway, I do no, want to say James St. James Klondike five nine seven full, <laughs> please. <laughs> but I um uh, two quick points. But um, I there's a disco in uh, Berlin. It's the world's smallest disco. It's called the Teledisco, and it's in a phone booth. And two <laughs> people can fit in it. It has an ice machine. It has a, a disco ball. It has you can you can dial the number and. It to, well, and it, different songs come up. Okay. Uh, and? I also remember this was very recently. I thought well, I thought it was very recently, but I was involved in an art project with the new um, museum in Brooklyn, and there were there were twenty seven phone booths still in Manhattan, okay. and. Um, they had celebrities like myself, yeah. and you would pick up the phone and you wouldn't put any money in it. But I would uh, appear on the phone and I would tell a story about the, that neighborhood. And I told I was on oh. two different places. One I was on Avenue D, and I told a story about an after hours club that was there mm-hmm. in in 1993. And there, then another one um, I was it was on Avenue C, and it was when I lived on Avenue C, and I used to live in the uh, in an apartment building that the um, uh, East Village murderer, the guy who, ch- who oh, chopped Daniel up Daniel Rakowski. Yeah, Daniel Orkowski. I remember his I name. Lived in, I lived in his apartment, Did and you? he was the one who used to chop up people. He chopped yes. up his girlfriend and, and fed, fed it to, to the, the homeless yes. people, and it was on my stove. And so I told this story. It was right outside my apartment building, and I told the story about On your living. stove? Yes, yes. It, Not it, your stove. No, my I stove. I got a yes. stove. You it was my you? exact apartment was where he was. You lived in him there afterwards. Yes, yes. And I used to, and um, Japanese people used to come and take pictures of my apartment, and I, I thought I was just very 
famous in Japan and didn't realize until afterwards that it was because I was living in the famous building, the apartment where he, he chopped And the James St. James Chili brand could have been born then if it had <laughs> yeah. like a half a brain. But anyway, my point is is that I, did, I was involved in this in this um, art you project. Inv- you invite a lot of... Uh-huh. I, I, ca- I can't top that, but I do have to share that my phone booth memory of New York is very specific. It's 8th Avenue and 6th where that movie house is. Yes. The IFC project. I was mugged in that phone booth. I was really? on the phone talking to Randy, and this guy came up and said, stuck a knife and said, give me all your money. And I'd just been to see Carell. I love Carell. Brad Best Davis. Best Carell with Brad oh, Davis. Was, I, was, I was just on recently. What is that? What is that? Yeah, oh, in the what? 80s. What? What is Carell? Highly know. lurid, saturated colors. Brad Davis, the most gorgeous. He was in Midnight Express. The most so beautiful. beautiful. So it's beautiful. a film. He, yeah, yes. Film he, 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 of a Jean Genet play okay. called The Thieves. And, I it, think. and it was, um, it was uh, Carell. in every single um, uh, sort of... David LaChapelle picture, yes. every, every Gautier, yes, it's David every LaChapelle uh, as a Pierre movie. Gilles, yes. Uh, everybody, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. sort of um, riffs on You must on see this. it. It, yes. it was uh, French sailors, and they were all fucking Impressed each other. In Marseille, and, and they were like oh, hot and so horny, beautiful. and they were bent over just, I mean, it was the most extraordinary. Oh, it's it my favorite part of the show when it, it doesn't make, it just blows <laughs> off. That's <laughs> oh, the best. Well, what, would you give any money? I gave more my money. I had like five dollars, and that was it. But I was like, you know, actually, and I just, the weirdest thing was, I was like, oh, Randy, um, I have to go right now. I'm being mugged, and I hung up the phone. But and what it, else did you, you know, do? Being mugged in New York is sort of obsolete now because the, the whole place is 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 Disneyland. It doesn't happen like we it used are to. packing them in. There's more than ten. <laughs> so we did a good job. Okay, we're gonna move on to number five. Number five. When Randy and I started World of Wonder. The very first thing that we brought, bought, and this was our pride and joy. What was, year-ish? What year-ish? Uh, I'm talking 1989. Okay. It was a... Blackberry. Fax machine. A fax, a fax machine. machine. Yeah. I tell you, it was. we put it in our sixth floor walk-up between B and C on 9th Street, and we would just sit around it waiting for <laughs> faxes to come to us. And it was just so exciting. You wake up in the morning and it'd be like just spews reams. of paper, reams of paper. And it was it was just frankly the most exciting thing. So but did you know and when do you think the fax machine was actually invented? During World War Two. Oh, I, I would have to say, Hedy Lamar. say like in the seventies or something, but eighteen forty three. What? what? Yes. <laughs> Alexander Bain devised an apparatus comprised of two pens connected to two pendulums, which in turn were joined to a wire that was able to reproduce writing on an electrically conductive surface. And it was patented. It was patented 33 years before the phone. Patented, really? Patented, patented. (laughs) Thank you, James. So, and it was an Englishman, of course, Alexander Bain, who was originally a clockmaker. Isn't that amazing? I mean, did Alexander Bain write? um, Alexander Bain, as in Bossom. Well, what did Alexander Payne write? Oh, some... Give me liberty or give yes. me death. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, I remember the fax machine. I remember it used to start off with that shitty fax paper yes. rolls. Uh-huh. Yes. And it was very crinkly. But it, it, was, it was waxy, it was, too. It was waxy. It was heat sensitive. That's yes. how it wasn't... It didn't have ink in it. It heated oh, the thing. I and, didn't know. And that, Wait, you know what else is obsolete? So it, burned, I it literally burned the text onto the page. The daisy, the daisy wheel. Printer. Um, printer. The, oh, I... <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. Oh. And but, then you'd have to peel the... the the, the perforated yes, yes. dots off of it, and then, but with the facts, then eventually you got to use real paper, and then I yes. think they introduced the ink yes. things, which is where all the money is, is in the ink, ladies and gentlemen. That's where they get yeah. you. Yeah. But uh, my dad had a fax machine attached to his phone for his business, so we right. could get a faxes at home. It was very exciting. The fax is very exciting, yeah, and uh, I mean, I find this amazing. Seventy three, there were thirty thousand fax machines. Sure. Eighty three, ten years later, three hundred thousand. Nineteen eighty nine, the year Randy and I bought ours. Four million fax yeah. machines. And now you go on eBay, and it's like $5 for a fax machine. Do you remember I mean, how much you guys paid? $600. Oh, wow. Really? It was our first office expense. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. still owe Randy, I think, <laughs> $47 on that. Yeah. Yeah. He's, taking, he's taking a dollar <laughs> off every paycheck. <laughs> well, they would charge, if you ever send a fax to a hotel, you're staying in a hotel, oh, they'd yes. charge you a dollar a page to That's send right. or receive. You know, outrageous. That's why uh, we like the internet, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, catch the sickening new season of RuPaul's Drag Race every Thursday, 9 p.m. VH1, and on WOW Presents Plus. And stay for Untucked. Because if you aren't watching Untucked, you're only watching Getting Half the Story. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> oh, and you can sign up for Wow Presents Plus by just going to wow-presents.com. It's easy, easy, so easy. Practically free. Wow-presents.com. Mm-hmm. Price, of a co- uh, price of a latte. Less. <laughs> less than the price of a latte. Less, but, less so latte. but so much more. I just wish the plugs could take longer. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's my goal. Like, Blake, do you have a question for I us? do have a mm-hmm. question, and it's weird because isn't there a person right behind you in a guy, Guy Fox mask? I don't know. He's yes, sick. there is in that. that what, what is that? Um, that uh, little, anonymous. Uh, thank you. The anonymous people. There's okay. a person sitting outside us. Q, wait, Q anonymous. Uh, uh, just anonymous. Just anonymous. Oh. Thank you. And uh, this <laughs> actually. It's the guy folks symbol. Yeah, it mm. has to do with anonymous and fax machines. Okay. Let's try your question. Let's do it. In 20, 2008, anonymous sent thousands of all black faxes to what organization to deplete all their ink cartridges? <sighs> 2000 when? Eight. Hmm. You're listening to Wow Report Radio. Andy will have the answer right after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report with Tom Campbell, James and James, Blake Jacobs, and myself, Fenton Bailey. Hi, Fenton. Hey. So before the break, yes. what was the question, Blake? In 2008, Anonymous, the group, Sent mm. thousands of all black faxes to what organization to deplete all their ink cartridges? I'm gonna say it was the Republican, uh, the Republican Party. Mm. Yeah, what's the opposite of Greenpeace? Is there some sort of NRA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea. What, what hit us, hit us, baby. The Church of Scientology. Oh, oh genius. But I question that because I don't d- fax machines. Did they really have ink? I think they did. I mm. think so, yeah. Okay. There's like a, a name the one, for this uh Not the attack. one we bought. No, you had the the, <laughs> the frontier the wagon the wheel. The verbal paper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ah, oh, dear. Okay, well, so what we're doing this week is, yeah, yeah. We, you know, we normally count down and talk to things that make us go, wow. wow. But we're counting down things that are now obsolete, long gone, but not forgotten. Yes. Or almost forgotten. We've reached number four. Top. Number four. Two words. Cursive writing. We uh, don't need it anymore. Cursive writing. Became, they don't even teach it anymore, do they? They don't. And people get all upset about that. But really, cursive writing was done because there were ink wells and ink pens and quills. Ooh, and a lot things. of quill. And so it was yeah. about keeping the pen or the point on a paper as long is as that, possible. Is that true? I had no idea. It was for speed. Okay. So it's like, you know, once you start, you can write much faster. Right. You know, then you can print um, or set a printing press. But, you know, actually just writing in general, I, I find that I can't even write anymore because I, I do it so infrequently that um, when I go to, to actually use my, my, my muscles. Crazy chicken ha- scratch. Yeah, my muscles don't have the memory to write anymore. And I, it's a shame because I love good, nice calligraphy. I love getting a handwritten letter. Well, from you're somebody. very good with that, James. You yeah, do well, send handwritten notes. I, Does I, he? I do. To this I, day. Yeah, I guess if I ever gave and it, my I hand gets really it. tired. Yeah, well, it's true. It's true. Do you remember in exams when you had to like uh, sit on an exam for like three hours and all you were doing was writing, writing, writing yes. essays? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And now you cramp up just at the, after you, two words. I have a super dumb question because I don't have like. Do kids take exams on computers now on tablets? Do they type? Well, stuff that's in? just it, isn't it? Do, like, do be, I mean, what they age must. do people start bringing in their tablets and their laptops? It's just school. Nolan, like, no no one, 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 twelve. He has a laptop. Yeah, don't a kids school get laptop. school laptops and, uh-huh. and yeah. iPads? But no like one, at, at college at Harvard, I used yeah. to have those blue books. The blue book. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> we still use those when I went to college too. What is I a blue this, book? You it write was, that it. was the exam book. There were the blue oh, books. It just had like paper. So the question might be here, but you answered it in the blue book. But but kids now bring their laptops to. Like eighth grade, yeah. seventh grade, yeah. really? Yeah. That's crazy. But and you think and you and take I, your notes in that now? I guess yeah. I do all of my banking online except for my rent check, which they don't have any. So I have to write a check, and it is the it's like oh. the degradation of my. I can't. It's like uh, 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 I write uh, checks uh, every every. I pay all my bills by hundred. Really, you yeah. still you still use checks? I was gonna, I was going to say that checks yeah. are are a sort of absolute are obsolete. <laughs> Absolutely obsolete. Absolutely obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> because I pay, handwriting I get well, to I do. pay everything online now. I pay everything with my phone. 
But you can have a nostalgia. There was an art form to it. You know, the Constitution was yeah, cursively written before yeah. all that kind of stuff. So there's definitely a, and and you someone's got to keep doing it, setting it because you won't be able to read documents from the past that were important and done cursively. But really, cursive writing wasn't so much primarily an art form as it was an easy, quick way to get the ink out of the pen and onto know. the page. I think so the fact that we're doing tappity tap 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 is just things being faster. Well, and people are arguing that w instead of teaching kids cursive, which they'll never use, right. they could teach them like coding for computers, which would, would an interviewer at work rather you you know how to do cursive or you well, know. Well, but, but that also falls in line with, I mean, like, we why do we teach kids addition and subtraction if, if everyone just uses, right. you know, I a calculator? Have, I have dear friends who have uh, beloved children who have some learning disabilities, and they're kind of hoping, I hope she doesn't need to do math because. Yeah. Yeah, there's always gonna be a computer with the with the. Well, with our the teachers well, spell always check. Why, why do we need to learn spelling anymore? Why? Uh, well, that was an there was an interesting thing recently where there, a sort of a meme -y type thing was going around where it was like a paragraph and all the words were misspelled and the letters were out of order. But if the first letter of the word is correct, your eye will guess we'll, the rest we'll of the word. Yeah. So actually, to your point, James, you don't need to spell correctly. You can just spell approximately. Yeah. Well, yeah. all of our teachers used to say. You need to learn this math because you're not always going to have a computer in your pocket. Well, no. I know. And they, now lied. You do. they lied. They um, lied. Uh. So cursive writing, bye bye. And um, yeah, and and I was an assistant for a while in my beginning of my career, and you used to have to take like um, people like someone would dictate a letter to you, right. and they knew I wasn't a stenographer, but they would talk really fast, and I would pretend I could keep up, and I would just like do cave draw like, dick, 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 dick. and just because i was bright and young back then i would go back to my desk and remember it and like oh. but it was so scary but like, i don't know that people have that kind have of memory no anymore either. What you just said yeah no, my short-term memory is something that's obsolete <laughs> <laughs> just yours alone <laughs> all right there you but have darling it. james you are not obsolete so what have you got for us at number three number three Something that is really obsolete that is some that everyone in Los Angeles will remember our Thomas Guides when you were first move here. That was your first investment. When I you always thought the Thomas Guide was a just a pain in well, the ass. Well, it was a pain in the ass because it was like it was, Thomas Guides. For those of you who don't know, were maps. It was a it was a map. It was invented in 1915. It's the, when the first one was. I guess around the same time as the first cars yep. um, in Los Angeles. There's <laughs> um there was a Boise, Idaho, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Oakland, Phoenix, Portland. In San Francisco, Seattle, Tucson. It was basically the West Coast all had Thomas guys. Yes. And it was but it's about, kind of ingenious. It, well, but, but well, here's the thing. Actually, because, no. Because it was it was like twelve hundred pages long, the Los Angeles the late one. And it wasn't in order. You would it would you, right. you you would go to it would be like um you would find like Hollywood and, and Highland and then at the top of the page it would say <laughs> go to page seven hundred and ninety four for the next part. It was an index. Yeah, and, and go and yeah, south it would say like, go to eight hundred and twelve. Uh, east it would be go to page 300 and west would be go to page 75 there would be no there, it, and, it was not one after the page and one after also the other. can i just also say the size of it was like this sort of a4 on its side and it was so thick and it had that spiral binding that it was basically a recipe in it it would fall off so, your lap yeah. And the pages would instantly it, start. There would always be one page yeah, that you use the most, the Hollywood the most, page. Yeah. And everything else would start tearing out. But and like it was I said, always it, flopping to, around like a like a dead fish in your lap. To, but to go to the like to go to the next page, it, you what, you didn't just go to the next page. You didn't just turn the next page. You had to go. It would say seven hundred ninety. Yes, we got that point. And then you'd have to. <laughs> may no, I? May, no may I? No may I? May I counterpoint? Maybe no, because there's no. There's no counterpoint to this. It was ridiculous. Amazing about it was you said I have to go to what's our address here uh, 6650 Hollywood 66 Boulevard 50 and if you Hollywood do come here Boulevard. if you do come here go to the store and so you would go to the yes to the, to the world five store, brand new t-shirts and nope. and let's say you you'd flip to the index where in order by Hollywood and things it would say Hollywood Boulevard and it would have a range of something but then you look for where six Six, but it, six, but it wouldn't five, be six six. Zero. It wouldn't be page sixty six, sixty seven, sixty eight, sixty nine, and seventy. It would be sixty six, no, 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 seven hundred forty two, no. eight hundred thirty seven, one thousand oh, okay. three hundred ninety four. That's so clear. Thanks. And so <laughs> I want to. So it would say, okay, this page is where six six five zero is, right? Right. Right. right so right. then you would flip to that page, right? And it would also say like D. It would have a D, like a letters D3. and a number D three. And so you would go D three, and you mm. say, oh. 
That's 6650 Hollywood Boulevard. Oh my gosh, it's two exits down from Vine. It would give you some context. And then if it had a uh, point that way, it would send it to another page. Yeah. But it was a map that covered all of Southern LA County that was in a book this big. But Otherwise, well, you, it would be like your brother's uh, encyclopedia <laughs> map times but, a thousand. But here's the thing, though. When you were driving. It's an ingenious no, thing. Back in the day, it was ingenious because back in the day when you were driving, you would right. have to, you would have to pull I, I over to the side. You would have to do it while oh, you were driving. Oh, my God. There was this crazy thing I used to do. It's like before I started the car, I would figure out where <laughs> I was going. Are you, why are you defending <laughs> Thomas Guy? <laughs> Because I, it taught me all about LA. I was a, before I was an assistant. I was me, a runner. And to I me, the worst thing is town. you're driving the car and it would be a stick shift. And you got this thing in your life. Yes. And you'd have to turn the page and it would flip off. But onto you didn't the turn floor. the page. You had to go 40 pages <laughs> in the future and then 40, 40 pages, but, 70 but, pages behind. I would just but, know where I was going and get there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't map it every step of the way. <laughs> and you can't have every page that goes right after the each other. Like if you think about exactly, it. Exactly, because that means someone's going to get left out. I thought ingenious. It, Someone figured it and out, and then the, and then the tragedy was, um, GPS game and killed it. Yeah, well, actually, I'm I'm sometimes challenged to read the GPS. I'm walking. Oh, yes. I'm like, I, I which don't direction really, I don't is this? GPS is. I like to get lost. I miss getting lost. I love the, p pulling over. I mean, you asking, are lost. Asking lost, lost. people on the street. It's, it's how I used to meet boys. It's how I would meet people. Getting uh, mugged. <laughs> yes, yes. Bonfires of the vanities. That kind of thing. Car navigation systems and maps on your iPhone have rendered the Thomas Guide obsolete. It's true. Has I wonder if is this still in business though? I mean, they must have made um, that well, millions. Actually, no, they they did they screwed up a bunch of things. They didn't manage to modernize, uh, or, and they, yeah, they it's, it's still around, fine. but they didn't do it properly. But and they could have had an on they could have been the new GPS right. online GPS, but they didn't. They didn't. But do didn't it. someone like Rand McNally buy them or something? So yeah, I don't mm. know. I, I, I didn't get that far on Wikipedia. All Look, right. uh, oh, number two. Number two. My turn. Number two. Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. Oh, I miss Mr. Movie Phone. Yes, right? Movie. I, that's all I remember. And then it would say, if you know the name of the movie you would like to see, press hmm. one. But then what would happen? That's what I can't remember. Then it would be like, it would be uh, uh, put the first few letters of the movie in. This okay. was a call up service, much like sex, uh, 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 sex Lines, but you'd be able to find out. Wh where your movie was playing, your at what movie theater, is not playing and, at. and at what uh, what what but times? The problem with that too was sometimes the voice recognition was off, and if you were slurring your words as I sometimes do, and you'd say, "I want to see Jumanji," and they would say, <laughs> "A Jewish woman in uh, <laughs> playing at yeah. three p.m." But yeah. I, you, but when I used movie phone, you had to key in, you had to punch in. You it, couldn't it oh, modernize oh, every time. But the idea oh. that James just sometimes slurs, <laughs> I think, is the really <laughs> salient point. The sometimes <laughs> listen. Movie Movie Phone was founded in 1989, and then it sold to AOL in 1999. Just in guess? time to become obsolete. Do you guess? I know, right? Brilliant, brilliant yeah. move yes. by AOL. AOL. Do you know how much they paid for it, though? Five million. A, a billion. Three hundred and eighty-eight million. That's good. Oh, that's the same to me as a billion. Just I, I, on the precipice, on the cusp of obsolescence, yeah. AOL stepped in, and the genius minds there paid. And Mr. Movie Phone became like a TV right. personality. Yeah. Yeah. His five, name right? is Russ Leatherman. And Russ you, Leatherman. Yes, and I saw him on a talk show. And was he cute? He was kind of cute, wasn't he? His mother. His mother. Uh, we have to interrupt one moment. Come here. Come here. Come oh, to the gonna, cameras. Oh, come Theron the is going to England. Theron Smothers who is our executive vice president of talent here at World of Wonder, is, is headed to the UK. Turn around, sweetie. Oh, oh look, there's, there's a there microphone you. for you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So you're going? Turn, turn, turn toward Who are you flying I'm with? Right now. Um, <laughs> I'm leaving right now with... On a jet plane. Uh, oh, he's doing a... a, a MS. What is it? Yeah. I'm leaving on a jet plane. What is oh, my question? God. Uh, what airline? Mm. Uh, it's British Airways. Oh. Is that one of those 737? No, God forbid. No, no, um, yeah. Please. Mm, God. That's obsolete. We'll see you soon. Yeah, we'll right. Godspeed, Bye. safe Have travel, fun. love to you. See you in a month. See you in a month. All right. Mwah. Mwah. You never know who's going to pop by the Wow Report. Am I right? Uh, you are right. You are right. For instance, I have no idea who that is. It's Q Anonymous. It's someone from Anonymous. Listen, right. Russ Leatherman was the voice of Movie Phone. Mr. Movie Phone. And get this, his mother was a speaking clock. I'm not kidding you. 
Her job was a speaking clock. The time will be 8.47 and, and I, 30 seconds. And that's something else I think that's probably obsolete, yeah. right? Yeah, I used to call Tom and Temp in my hometown all the time. Could you imagine? Hey you, there, your boy. mother is a speaking clock and you become Mr. Movie Phone. Like, what are the odds? What's the future for his children? The other interesting thing about Movie Phone is... is Alexa. One of the founders was Andrew... <laughs> <laughs> And Sorry. Siri. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Cousin Siri. Oh, his <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Now one celebrities are taking One of the of movie phone was Andrew Jarecki. Who is Andrew oh, Jarecki? Yeah, he was director of, of Capturing the Freedmans. Uh-huh. Nice. We had dinner with Andrew Jarecki we in did. Scotland. Uh, yes, did he pay? Did. Because he made $300 million. And he no, but he had a really, he, he was very attractive and his, his girlfriend was very attractive. And we were sort of in love with both of them. We were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should call him up see what's up. Hi, Andrew. <sighs> Reality show. <laughs> now we look on the internet for showtimes where we go for everything else. <laughs> the cap <laughs> uppers. And now everything's on the internet. All right. RuPaul's Dragon will be here before you know it. Theron's back. Theron's oh. getting water. Okay. Bye, Theron. Yes. Hydrate lunch. on the flight. Uh, get your tickets for RuPaul's Drag Con LA 2019 on May 24th, 25th, and 26th now at RuPaul'sDragCon.com. LA Convention Center, LA. Nice mm -hmm. weather. Come on. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, the number one thing, the most obsolete thing that we can think of will be revealed. Great. So, our report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. And welcome back. What is the number one thing that well, is the most obsolete thing? We are counting down all this thing, a special episode of the obsolete things that no longer, no longer are necessary because technology. And I'm going to be so bold as to say the number one thing that is obsolete is number one things. The number one. It's so clever. That's brilliant. Because well, well, don't we don't necessarily have to watch anything in the linear fashion anymore. I guess maybe the exception is Radio Andy because you're stuck in your car. But if you're listening to the app, exactly. where, where, where you can just jump around. Wait, I, people just go to straight to number one or nobody listens to number one anymore? It doesn't really matter what order doesn't the things are. It's like it spelling, James. It doesn't matter what order the letters are in. Oh. And, <laughs> and you can also so watch meta. The Wow Report <laughs> on YouTube, Wow Report, World of Wonder. And there, you know, all of our lovely uh, commenters are like, you know, they only want to hear one story. They're like, what's the link? What's the number? I don't want to uh, listen to you guys talk about yourselves. Get to the point. I will get to the Ariana Grande story. So number one, in its own weird way, the idea of even the idea of, I guess, even curating things for people is much less important. It's true. I love on Saturday mornings on seven, the seventies on on seven on the serious radio uh, thing. They play early Saturday morning, early Sunday morning. They play Casey Kasem's American Top Forty. Yeah. Oh yes, from and he would, the seventies. Yes, oh. yes. I liked it better in the eighties, but and he but, would always like give you little nuggets of information, right? But I was, can I just tell you that was just like yes, but it was the one little drop of pop culture that made it through the hills of New Hampshire um, onto the AM radio dial mm. to know what was everyone was listening to. Everyone, I mean, there was a soul chart and there was an adult champion chart, but we all knew the same things, and it was very important what was number one. It was very important that we got that information because it was shared by almost all of the population that was the pop culture Wait. and today everybody has their own number one everybody has their own list everybody curates and mixes and matches so number one is obsolete hmm. but also you know I, I agree with that number one is obsolete but also i think it's we should just say as as much as things are becoming obsolete so new things are coming all the time because in like putting like thinking about rolodexes and fax machines and things that like that that turned me on yep. i came across Blackberries. i came across something called the ember which is a, uh, <laughs> okay, you make yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, right? And that's great, right? And you're drinking, and then you get distracted, and before you know it, it's cold. And so you have a half cup, cold cup of coffee, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, mm. yes. Well, that's a problem. Th that isn't a problem. That I, is I a problem. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know. I do, and I have that problem. Uh, or tea, James. I did watch Forever Amber this weekend. But... Okay. Hold that thought. Yep, that's good. I would just on, get baby. to the end of this, which is the Ember is a mug that is controlled by your iPhone. And so you can turn it, you can, your coffee, your cup of coffee never gets cold because the Ember mug is electronically heated. 
and you just point your iPhone at it and it raises it to the temperature you want your tea at. The never getting cold cup of tea, I think, is a brilliant invention. Ember, thank Gluing you. Gluing you back to your iPhone is the scary part of that. Right. And my brother keeps saying that there was a sun flare like in 1843. And he remembers it like it was <laughs> no, yesterday. No, but there's something like the sun flare. And a sun flare will, will, will fry. It's a natural occurring thing, and it will fry every electronic device known to man. Oh, okay. And it happened like in 1843 or something. So and it could so happen again. when the flare happens again, all... nothing will work. Everything will be obsolete. Key cars, It'll hotel be like, rooms. Your car is half electronic. The real oh, yeah. life Y2K. Everybody's. Yeah. The real life Y2K. Well, we'll so electricity may soon other. be obsolete. Way to bring it back. Way to bring it back. Into a now back to, back to the movie you watched this weekend. Forever Amber with Linda Darnell and Cornell Wilde. That was a saucy novel when it, it first was came out. It was in the 1940s. It was huge. I have a cousin named Amber. It was a little risque. I did that. find a piece of technology for you, James, though. Oh, Blackberry. It's a cock ring with a camera on it. I, actually, I, someone just gave me a cock ring that vibrates recently. Well, I can have one with a camera. You can get incredibly unusual angles with it. Is it I called the where, Yeah, where you, you can film oh. yourself, you can film the penetration. Just yeah. for fans. Um, um, I th I was thinking of it, in your case, it would be more like capturing that guy who was caught licking the doorbell <laughs> off the, the door cam. That someone would just be like... A tongue cam for yeah, me, yeah, so I can... Someone like, just licking your thigh or something. Well, we don't sell don't Ember ever warming teacups and we don't sell camera cock rings at the wow store but come on by anyway because we've got five brand new t-shirts which are fabulous at the world of wonder headquarters on hollywood boulevard can i ask you a question eh. what's the tea shirt <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's it. you can You'll you can buy them online too store.worldofwonder.com Net. 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 Oh. Store.worldofwonder.net. Net. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. Listen anytime on the Sirius Radio app or watch anytime on the Wow Report. Is anyone except for me worried that maybe the Wow Report's becoming obsolete? <gasps> See you same time, same place next <laughs> week. Until then, James go out. Like James thinks I'm becoming obsolete. And do That's something. Job, Tom. Please, that don't, please don't put that, that bug, that bee in his bonnet, okay? Or I'll be, I'll be out of a job. Wow. Wow. Say.